All right, Shalom. I want to start out by giving our praise, honor, and glory due to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakwadash. I'd like to give double honor unto the apostles and the artists of Great Millstone, where I learned this truth from, and I'd like to say peace and salutations unto the hopefully licked. <coughs> and today I just want to go into this article from NBC News, and it says Federal judge declares Texas drag law unconstitutional. So I'm just going to go into this article and bring out a couple of scriptures. Lord willing, this lesson is edifying and straight to the point. Excuse me. So as you can see, you know, these these men and these women's apparel, you know, is, is becoming more and more blatant. So it says, Drag Queens Bridget Bandit left in tequila rolls lead a pride march in austin texas on june 10th and this was published september 26 so this was published yesterday it says a federal judge on tuesday struck down a texas law that alphabet advocates feared would ban drag shows in the state and imprison performers <clears throat> The law, which Republican Governor Greg Abbott signed in June, expanded existing law, Slakia, ex existing state law to prevent children from exposure to sexually explicit performances. While the legislation, Senate Bill 12, does not cite drag, specifically drag performers feared that it would, Slakia, that it was passed with the intention of criminalizing the art form, which has deep ties to the alphabet community and it would repress their freedom of expression. Now they're trying to call it an art form. That's not a form of art. You know, that's confusion, if anything. <clears throat> and it says the bill's statement of intent leads with and repeatedly cites drag shows as a threat to children, and they are. And on the day Abbott signed the bill into law, he shared an article about it and wrote, Texas governor signs law banning drag performances in public. That's right. U.S. District Judge David Hittner, who was nominated by Republican President Ronald Reagan, ruled in favor of the plaintiffs, writing that the law impermissibly infringes on the First Amendment and chills free speech. <clears throat> Not all people will like or condone certain performances, Hidden wrote. This is no different than a person's opinion on certain comedy or genres of music, but that alone does not strip First Amendment protection. Hitner, who temporarily blocked the law from taking effect last month, added that the chilling effect SB 12 or Senate Bill 12 will have on speech in general outweighs any hardship on the state of Texas. <coughs> Alphabet advocates and drag performers celebrated the ruling. Alphabet Texans, venue owners, performers, and our allies all came together to uphold free expression in our state, and we won. The American Civil Liberties Union of Texas, which filed the lawsuit on behalf of the plaintiffs, wrote on X, formerly known as Twitter, This work isn't done, but for now we celebrate long live Texas drag man and as you can see they're still celebrating this this alphabet madness pretty much they want the freedom to be able to you know groom people children into thinking that that particular lifestyle is okay when in fact it's not <clears throat> says Texas drag performer Bridget Bandit one of the plaintiffs said in a statement to NBC affiliate KXAN on Austin that she was relieved 
and grateful for the court's ruling. My livelihood and community has seen enough hatred and harm from our elected officials, Bandit said. This, this decision is a much needed reminder that the queer Texans belong and we deserve to be heard by our lawmakers, man. A spokesperson for State Attorney General Ken Paxton, the lead defendant in the case who was acquitted during a historic impeachment trial earlier this month, confirmed in a brief email late Tuesday evening that Paxton will appeal the ruling. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick a Republican also suggested after the ruling that legislators will again try to restrict drag performances in the state. <clears throat> SB 12, which restricts children from being exposed to drag queen performances, is about protecting young children and families. Patrick wrote on X, this story is not over. Republican legislators in more than a dozen states are trying to restrict drag performances, particularly in the presence of minors. Says Montana and Tennessee have passed like yeah, have passed laws that expi- explicitly limit drag performances in some capacity and for other states, Arkansas, Florida, North Dakota, and Texas passed laws this year that regulate adult performances and could be used to target or restrict drag. According to the Alphabet Policy Think Tank Movement Advancement Project, Tennessee's drag law will similarly be ruled ruled (coughs) unconstitutional this year and the laws in Arkansas and Florida are not enforceable pending ongoing lawsuits. So yeah, as you can see again, they pretty much want freedom to groom people, children. And as you can see in this picture, like, look at this, this is madness. People want their, their children to be acceptable to this. Like these are men in women's clothing. You know, this is confusion, you know, and it's sickening. And they pretty much want that right to just be able to, from, you know, their their point of view, express, you know, their art form when this isn't a form of art. You know, it's madness. <clears throat> so I'm going to start in the book of Revelation, chapter 11 and verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the, of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So, yes. Excuse me. So, as we know, America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great, is spiritually known as Sodom and Egypt. And it's known as Sodom because of just just this article alone, you know, that I've brought out. But we already know, you know, the main reason is, is spiritually called Sodom because of the alternative lifestyle that is pushed heavily in this country. You know, it's spiritually Egypt because you know, of the hardcore bondage wherein the children of Israel had to suffer, you know. But again, this is spiritually Sodom and Egypt. You know, this is madness. These men talking about <clears throat> it's an art form, but that isn't an art form, man. That is not an art form. So I'm going to go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5 and it says the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man neither shall a man put on a woman's garment for all that do so are abomination unto the lord thy power so yes you know yahweh bashim yahweh looks at this as an abomination and it is you know look at this it's sickening you know a man isn't supposed to wear a woman's garment and a woman isn't supposed to wear anything that pertaineth unto a man, you know. But this is the society we live in today where these particular things are pushed, you know. 
is an extremely sick society we live in. So I'm going to come to the book of Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 13. And it says, if a man also lie with mankind <clears throat> as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They, are, they shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. And yes, you know, seeing that we can't keep, you know, the law, statutes, and commandments in its entirety. You know, one, because we're in these fleshly bodies, you know. So we're in bodies that were made to go off. And then also, you know, we're in this this current society where, you know, if we were to, you know, do particular of the laws that we would, we would get in trouble you know, this is pretty much the penalty for a man that will get caught in the act of doing, you know, something he is supposed to do with another man. <clears throat> because life, you can't create life between two men just like you can't create life between two women. Life only happens between a man and a woman through the act of sex, you know. That's the only way that, you know, a child can be produced, you know, your lineage can continue, you know, but again, this alternative lifestyle is pushed extremely heavy here in America and primarily on the nation of Israel, you know. And this is the book of Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 9. And it says, The show of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declared their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. And yes, you know, again, got to keep showing this picture because they're declaring their sin as Sodom. Pretty much they had, you know, a, a march after they won, you know, this case. You know, because they're pretty much saying that this lifestyle is okay. It's not okay. It's an abomination unto the Lord, and it's extremely sickening. You know, to behold a man wearing women's apparel. You know. So I'm going to go to the book of Romans. Chapter 1. And I'm going to start at verse 26. And it says, For this cause, Yahweh gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. Excuse me. And as you know, you know, pretty much that's what these men did. You know, they left the natural use of the woman, you know, because they were, they were burned to their lust, you know. They're pretty much going after other men. You know, strange flesh, and I'm going to bring that out as well. <coughs> the book of Jude chapter 1 and 7 it says even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth as an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire and yes you know that's one reason why America has to be destroyed you know <clears throat> because of the lifestyle and alternative the alternative lifestyle that is pushed here you know america is modern day sodom and gomorrah but it's worse you know we can only imagine you know what was going on back then but you know it's even worse now you know so i'm gonna go to So 
lucky. Okay, it's like you. It's the book of Second Peter, chapter 2. And I'm going to start at verse 6. And it says, And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after shall live ungodly, and deliver just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul <clears throat> from day to day with their unlawful deeds. So, yes, you know, pretty much lot, you know, he had to suffer seeing and hearing, you know, those things back then. But pretty much, you know, those of us that are truly sincere, we're, we're, we're in that same spirit because this, this right here, this is vexing, you know. Because these are things that we have to see, you know, things that we have to hear, you know, the story time. And look at this. There are, you know, I won't say a whole lot, but, you know, there's children out there with these people that are pushing us. This this madness right here, you know. It's sickening. So we're in that same spirit of lot, you know. We're vexed. And we're going to go to the book of First, First Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. And it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. <coughs> nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. You know, the point in verse 9 is, nor effeminate or abusers of themselves with mankind. So, you know, these men right here, you know, they're Edomite men, but, you know, they're still effeminate. You know, they're abusers of themselves with mankind, meaning that, they are a part of this this community right here. You know, they are a part of this. And people that are a part of this aren't going to make it. You know, they are not going to make it. They're going to be destroyed. <coughs> you know, so again, Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed with fire and brimstone. And America is going to get that same judgment, but worse, you know. So... Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory due to Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shai. By Hashem Rakakwadash. I'd like to give double honors unto the apostles and the artists of Great Millstone. Where I learned this truth from. And I'd like to say peace and salutations unto the hopefully elect. Till the next time I say Shalom.